Hey everyone, Matt Pridham from Web Diligence. Welcome to another iSnipe video tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be digging a little deeper into iSnipe, uh, such as saving our own ballistic profiles, uh, getting weather data from the internet, and exploring the uh, angle and, and wind screen. So, once in a while, you're going to run into a piece of ammunition that isn't in the iSnipe database. In these cases, you'll have to enter the data yourself, and of this can get a little tedious if you have to do it more than once. So I'm going to take you through how to save your own ballistic profile. In this case we're going to use uh, a bullet requested by one of our users that I'm currently adding to the database and that is the 257 Roberts otherwise known as the 257 Bob. Uh, the one we're going to be looking at is the Remington Arms Soft Point Core Locked and it has a ballistic coefficient of 0.240, a projectile weight of 117 grain, and a muzzle velocity of 2650 feet per second. And we'll go ahead and click Done. That's all the information we require in order to save this profile, so let's go ahead and click the Save icon in the bottom left corner here. iSnipe will prompt us for a name. Again, it's the 257 Bob. Thank you. And we can save it uh, either in the user or favorites screen. For now we'll choose the user and click save. Anytime we want to load this profile, we just go ahead and load on the user screen, the 257 Bob, and we're ready to roll. Next we'll head over to the angle to target screen. Uh, once in a while you're going to be shooting at an angle and this is an effective way of measuring that angle. Uh, iSnipe instructs us to place the device on a cool barrel so as not to uh, burn your iPhone or iPod touch and we'll click the OK button. Now for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm using a computer simulator uh, for the iPhone and unfortunately I cannot measure the angle on this, but rest assured when you place it on, on your firearm, uh, the bullet will move and the angle will be measured at the bottom. When you have found the angle that you're ready to shoot at, uh, just press the hold button and that will stop the angle from changing when you pull your iPhone back up to have a look at the screen and uh, move on to the next step. Uh, the next step is the wind direction, and we can use the circular dial here to choose which way the wind is coming from, and it makes for a very uh, easy visual indicator. We click the back button and notice that our numbers have been updated. Uh, let's go ahead and change our max range uh, to a thousand yards, and our step size to 20 yards. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at here is the atmosphere section. We can load in weather data in one of two ways. We can load it directly into the main screen by pressing the metal weather button. Or we can choose to get a more detailed look by pressing the third weather button. This gives us our current conditions based on the closest uh, weather station to you and it's a nice visual indication of what's going on. We can see the temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. We click apply to add that to the main screen and we're ready to compute. Now with these values set you'll get a much more accurate um, output <coughs> because of our atmospheric values. For those of you curious, the first weather button here just turns the atmosphere section off, uh, making for a much simpler computation, and um, sometimes this is exactly what you want. Now the last thing I'm <coughs> going to go into here is the Compute at Distance button. Uh, this is for those of you that don't wish to see an output screen of many values. You know exactly how far you're going to be shooting and you really just want your results right now. So if we click the Compute at Distance button, 
it's going to ask us for the distance we're talking about. Let's go ahead and enter 415 yards, for example, and click Calculate. This will take us to a detail screen with the information we added on the main screen for exactly 415 yards, as you can see here. Again, we can go through and see it in a mill or click value, and we can choose to add a moving target to the situation if we choose. Again, the values that compute at distance uses is exactly the same values that the compute button uses. It just skips the middle step of having to scroll through and find whichever range you're looking for. That's it for today's lesson. Hope you guys learned something. We'll see you next time.